we've never had the oceans at this temperature. We've never had CO2 at this level. This is a new reality for us. Now, the climate has changed before, but we're warming faster than we've ever warmed before, 55 times faster than any time that we know about in the last 500 million years. Hello, I'm Rebecca Rubin, and welcome to Vital Voices of the Environment. My guest today is John Englander, an oceanographer, consultant, and author. Combining personal experiences as a global ocean explorer with expeditions in Antarctica, Greenland, and the High Arctic, and deep dives in research submarines, along with having served as CEO of the Cousteau and International Seakeeper Societies, his mission is to be a clear, objective voice on our changing climate and oceans. You've just published a new book called High Tide on Main Street that sounds the alarm for seas rising faster, higher, and sooner than the prevailing scientific models suggest. You're one of many who has written and spoken on the subject of climate and sea level rise, and yet you have a unique perspective and an interesting voice. What makes you so sure that dramatic levels of sea level rise for the future are such a certainty? It again comes from looking at at least 400,000 years of data and seeing how carbon dioxide, CO2, global average temperature, and sea level correlate. And there's a graph in my book where I overlay the three different factors and they line up almost perfectly. The uh, CO2 traps the heat. We can see the effect on warming. And as the ice sheets melt over centuries, sea level adjusts. John, in that same chart that you just finished talking about, you've got this CO2 spike that basically goes vertical. What, what is that? How do we think about that? Well, carbon dioxide is this really powerful gas. It's hard to believe, but one molecule in thousands actually has a real effect on, on the Earth's temperature. If we didn't have any carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, Earth would be 60 degrees colder, pure physics. It's that effective at trapping heat. And what you're referring to is that the normal range of carbon dioxide for the last 10 million years has been 180 to 280 parts per million. Easy numbers to remember. They're approximate. We're now at 395. 40% higher than at any time in the last 10 million years. And CO2 does trap heat, and we are seeing the effect with warmer temperatures in the ocean, 8 tenths of a degree Celsius, degree and a half Fahrenheit, and sea levels are starting to rise. They're following. So let's cut to the chase. Who's going under and when? Well, the interesting thing, of course, about sea level rise is it's not a point event like a storm, like Sandy or Katrina. It's essentially universal. Every coastal city in the world, and while we may tend to hear about the Maldives or worry about the Bahamas or Miami, it's Boston, it's Seattle, it's Sacramento, it's every coastal city in the world, and those cities that are on rivers. I just mentioned Sacramento, Washington, D.C. Mm. is here on the Potomac. That's a navigable tidal river. And every place in the world will be affected that is affected by ocean height. John, in your view, what is not being accounted for in the current models or methods? The models of sea level rise are surprisingly conservative. In fact, looking back over the last 20 years, they have underestimated sea level rise quite clearly. That's now documented. The uncertainties are two things, uh, or two, two good examples. The methane which is being released is a a tremendous amplifier. It's far more powerful as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And that's not in any of the models yet because we don't know how quickly methane will come out of the permafrost or the seabed. The other big unknown, perhaps the quickest un or most sudden potential change, is West Antarctica. While East Antarctica is getting a little thicker with some ice, West Antarctica has two glaciers that are highly unstable and have been tracked for 35 years. And they are warming and loosening and it's possible, but not yet probable, that these glaciers will disgorge, or in fact just go into the ocean over about a decade. And if that happens, that would dramatically rise sea level about six feet in a decade, which would be catastrophic. So let's take this down to a more basic level. It's hard for many people to conceptualize what a foot of sea level rise looks like. Can you put this in a context that people can understand? Sure, and you're right. 
uh, we see tides rising maybe three or four feet and then an extreme tide during a lunar high tide, another foot. But what does it mean when we add another foot of sea level? Well, for each foot of sea level rise, experts have come up with a rule of thumb that says there's a 300 foot horizontal movement. And now that we're looking at it more closely and a lot more attention because of the concern about sea level and storm events, the belief is that if anything, that 300 foot ratio is on the low side. And that's a global average. In places like Florida, where it's low flat land, the ratio could be 1,000 to 1. So for each foot of sea level rise, we could have the shoreline moving in 1,000 feet. The fact that sea level doesn't stay constant is a new reality. That hasn't happened in the last 6,000 years. So what do you tell people, John, who come to you and say, wow, that's a dire picture. What can I do or what can my community do to still make a difference? There's two things. Uh, I tell them that whether we get six feet of sea level rise in 20 or 30 years or in 120 years, if we know that's going to happen and we understand that, we'll begin thinking differently in all of our structures and our regulations, our zoning, how high we build buildings. We can see that coming. And if the best thing happens, if we only get three feet at the end of the century, but we get the odd storm, we're still going to be better prepared. So I think adaptation to a rising sea and a moving shoreline, the sooner the better. And then the second thing we should do is try and take our foot off the gas pedal, is slow down the warming. But even if we stop the warming today, we're still going to get this rising sea because the heat is already in the pipeline or it's baked into the equation. We've already warmed eight-tenths of a degree Celsius. We know that we have to eventually get 50 feet of sea level rise. So, John, those were some very sobering words, but I thank you for bringing them to us today. And I also think that there are a number of community planners and others who will be very interested in looking again at your book, High Tide on Main Street, John Englander, the author. Thank you again for being with us today on Vital Voices of the Environment. Thank you, Rebecca. I've really enjoyed the opportunity.